I wanted to share a story that's one of my favorite serendipity stories. It's about a guy by the name of Chris Anderson. Uh, not the Chris Anderson that's responsible for all of this, but uh, the Chris Anderson who's the editor of Wired magazine. Uh, Chris was looking for a CTO for a startup he had founded on drone aircraft technology. He searched systematically through all the logical places. He went to MIT, Carnegie Mellon, Caltech, couldn't find anybody that met the kinds of qualifications he was looking for. But one day, he was in an online discussion forum, and he struck up a conversation with somebody he had never met before. And long story short, he decided this is the guy that I need to be my CTO. It turns out he was a high school graduate, 19 years old, in Tijuana, Mexico. He is now the CTO of Chris's startup, and they're working closely together. I think this story illustrates some of the potential around serendipity. It's becoming more and more valuable, and yet more and more challenging. The problem is, in a world that's so rapidly changing, we no longer even know where to look for the people that, are most, that matter the most to us. The serendipity can help us connect to those people, even if they're on unexpected edges, geographic edges, generational edges, disciplinary edges, people we never knew existed before, but who become extraordinarily valuable to us in terms of getting better faster by working together. Now, I can see a lot of you in the audience saying, well, this is really interesting, but wait a minute, serendipity is pure luck. It happens when it happens. The only thing you can do is be prepared for it when it happens. Well, I would make the case that we actually have significant opportunity to shape serendipity. It's something that I discuss in much greater length in a recent book called The Power of Pull. But it has to do with the notion of how do you increase the probability and the quality of those unexpected encounters. And it has to do ultimately with the choices that we all make in terms of where we spend our time and how we spend our time. So think about virtual environments, social networks, discussion forums, become very rich opportunities for serendipity, as it was for Chris in that discussion forum. It's not just virtual environments, it's conferences like this, rich seedbeds of serendipity. And it's in the cities we live in. Here's a real interesting paradox. In a world that's becoming flatter and flatter, we are accelerating our movement into large urban concentrations. We're getting spikier and spikier. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons is because I think intuitively we understand that in dense urban populations, we're much more likely to have those unexpected encounters than if we're out in some rural area. So it has to do with where we spend our time, but it also has to do with how we spend our time. And it turns out one of the most powerful means to shape serendipity is also one of the most challenging. It has to do with sharing the problems that we're working on, the problems that we don't know the answers to, the problems that we're tearing our hair out about. It means expressing vulnerability, not just to your close friends, but to people you don't even know. One of the reasons Chris was in this discussion forum is he had some problems he was trying to find answers for. So very difficult. Bottom line, I think few of us are tapping into the full potential to shape serendipity. Just to reflect on a couple of questions just about your own choices. It turns out the choices we make hour by hour, day by day, really have a significant impact. One question, how tightly scheduled are your days? If your days are really tightly scheduled, you're minimizing the opportunity for serendipity. You're limiting that opportunity. Second question, how often and how, fre how frequently and how broadly do you share the problems that you're working on? If you're not sharing those problems really broadly, you're much less likely to attract the people to you who can be most helpful, who are most relevant in solving those problems. So at the end of the day, I think that it, the question is, does this really matter? Well, it's an opportunity, as I've said, but it's also interesting that in a world that is more and more intensely competitive, where we're facing more and more pressure, if we don't connect with the people who are most relevant to us, even if we never knew they existed, we're going to have a harder and harder time to learn faster 
and improve our performance more rapidly. So in that kind of environment, serendipity is not just an opportunity, it becomes an imperative. And I would argue that those of us who continue to believe that serendipity is just pure luck, there's nothing you can do about it, are increasingly going to be at a disadvantage relative to those of us who are shaping serendipity to create advantage. Thank you very much.